This is going to be a very brief video about data resources. Many of you who are taking the class already have some data that you have in your hands that you'd like to be able to analyze. But it's a good idea always to have in the back of your mind other data sets that you might be able to use or be able to access that can be useful for you in uh, either practicing your data analysis or to integrate with your own resources. So the first thing to keep in mind is that many governments, uh, including the government of the United States, uh, have decided to put a lot of the data about the, the workings of the civic organizations um, affiliated with the government online. So this is the uh, example for the United States. It's called data.gov. And there are a bunch of data sets that you can get from this uh, website. You can also access their data through APIs so that you can build tools that are based on open government data. Similarly, other governments uh, have other have equivalent data resources. So, for example, this is the uh, equivalent to data.gov, but from France. And so they have, again, a large number of government-related data sets that are available for download and, um, and analysis. And there's another uh, data.gov for um, the United Kingdom, and it's currently in the works for the entire European Union to have a uh, data portal that will allow you to access all the data for uh, the European Union. Um, at least that's my understanding. You should also take a look at the uh, course wiki where we actually have uh, an ongoing thread about all sorts of available open data sets. Another really uh, exciting data set is the Gapminder data set. This is put together by uh, the folks uh, who support Hans Rosling, who is one of the more famous statisticians. You may have seen him in his uh, very enthusiastic and exciting TED Talks. They've actually put together a lot of data. These are, uh, I would say, that they're data about the world, uh, in particular about public health and global health, and um, are very useful data for exploring those sorts of trends if, if that's something that's interesting to you. They're also very uh, easily accessible and can be downloaded and analyzed locally, as well as using the software that they've created for visualizing data on the web. Uh, there's also uh, a lot of other open government data. So here I've uh, linked to three other places where people have tried to sort of come together and bring out collections of open government data. So there's a catalog here. Um, this is a Civic Commons uh, list. This would, I think, one is the most comprehensive that I've seen of uh, governments, uh, both local, uh, state in the United States, and federal uh, uh, information. Then we've done on our blog another sort of list of cities and states with open data, and I think there are a few that we've caught that other people haven't seen. To be fair, this is sort of a, an area in flux, and so it's as more and more governments uh, put their data online, eventually they'll easily be consolidated all in one place, but that's sort of just starting now. You can also check out, like I said, the course wiki where um, people are already sort of contributing data sets that are available, including open government data sets. This is a really nice website that's um, put together by the same individual who did the tutorials for R. So he's uh, actually put together R scripts that allow you to analyze several of the largest survey data uh, sets that are available from the United States. So things like the American Community Survey or NHANES. And so he actually has all of these data along with sort of R scripts for collecting and processing those data available. It's, it's very nice. So that's another place to collect some data if you need some for analysis. Then there's the InfoChimps Marketplace. So InfoChimps is actually a company, and they offer a, sort of a platform for data analytics. But they also uh, have a marketplace where they've collected a bunch of data sets that you can use for analysis. And they include data sets that are sort of geotagged. They have data sets about businesses and locations. And they have uh, information about sort of um, facilities and schools and communities and, and so forth. Some of these data are free, and so that you can access them um, directly. Some you can access through an API, either for free or for a cost. And some of the data sets you actually have to pay for. I mean, they are a company, and so they're trying to make money. So you should pay attention to which data set you're trying to access, and they'll, of course, uh, uh, let you know before they charge you. Another example is uh, a place that you can get data is Kaggle Contests. So Kaggle is a company that hosts data science or predictive analytics competitions. And many of these competitions have data sets that you can download and analyze and try to discover new structure in. You can also partic participate in the comp competitions themselves, or you can just sign up for an account just to download the data. Either way, um, there's a lot of really cool projects and really cool data that are available through Kaggle. There's also some more specialized collections of data sets that might be useful for people. So these are sort of, I would say, uh, aggregators of, of data sets. So um, 
The first is Hillary Mason's research quality data uh, aggregator. She's collected a bunch of really interesting data sets. I would say they're very diverse and include some of the uh, other data sets I list here below. The Stanford Large Network Data um, uh, Collection uh, has a bunch of data sets on networks. The UCI Machine Learning Data Set uh, Collection has data sets that might be useful for practicing prediction type problems, similar to sort of the KDD Nuggets data sets, although that also has a relatively large group of data sets. Um, finally, there's the uh, CMU StatLib Gene Expression Omnibus and Archive data sets. The StatLib data sets are uh, data sets used for illustrating particular statistical methods. Gene expression omnibus are data sets that are specific uh, to gene expression analysis. And then archive data is uh, data about the papers that have been published in this database called Archive. And it's a huge amount of data that you can access about um, all of those papers, including the full text of those papers, if you um, are able to access them. You can also access data through APIs. So I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. And I've picked these examples because I know about the R packages for these APIs. So for example, if you click on this link, you'll go to the Twitter API, which allows you to interact with and download and uh, use Twitter data. And there's a corresponding uh, Twitter package with a capital R here at the end that allows you to access that API and download some data and do some analysis with it. Similarly, Figshare um, is an open science initiative that allows you to put data sets online and share them and cite them. And there's a nice R package that allows you to access the API for those uh, for the Figshare and to download the data and interact with them as well. Uh, the Public Library of Science is a uh, journal, well it's more than a journal, it's sort of an organization that's dedicated to publishing scientific papers in a way that they're free to access. And you can access a bunch of information about those papers using the R plus uh, package in R. Finally, if you go to R OpenSci, this is a, uh, a collection of packages of which um, the R Figshare package and I think the R Plus package are both uh, components of R OpenSci. And these are uh, a bunch of R packages that allow you to access all sorts of scientific data that is free and available on the web. So that's, like I said, just a quick tour of some of the places that you can get data if you don't have some already. There are obviously way more examples than I could possibly talk about here. And like I said, on the course wiki, we've already started a collection that's much, much larger than this uh, set of data resources that I've talked about here. So if you want to learn more about where you can get data, you can check that out.